Ladies and gentlemen, before I get started, I just want to tell you a little bit more about the lady you just heard from. Fern is responsible for 80-some Stamp Out Stigma presentations by herself. She carries the Stamp Out Stigma banner in the Shenango Valley. If it wasn't for Fern, there would be no Stamp Out Stigma at Penn State Shenango. Ladies and gentlemen, real loud, make some noise for Fern. Come on. My name is Jack Lichetti. I graduated from this campus in the fall of 2014 with my bachelor's in the Human Development and Family Studies program. Before I get started today, I have a couple people besides Fern that I would like to acknowledge. Um, I'd like to acknowledge Mr. Alex Morosi. Alex was a student speaker during the first Stamp Out Stigma here at Penn State Shenango. He graduated um, in HDFS also. He's gone on to get his master's in social work from Youngstown State University. And um, he's here today. I'm happy he's here to uh, tie the whole thing together. So Alex, you want to like raise your hand or wave or something so people know who And he's here with Nick Taylor. Nick was a great friend of mine, also um, graduated from the HDFS program, also got his master's in social work at Youngstown State University. Nick did not speak at Stamp Out Stigma, but he was a huge supporter. We were always wearing our wristbands, stamping it out. So Nick, thank you very much for being here. These gentlemen are from the Serenity Center. As Fern said, if you need um, if you need services in Ohio, go talk to these gentlemen. If you're looking for mental health prevention <coughs> services in Mercer County, go talk to Fern. Both of these agencies have information about their services on their tables. I also want to acknowledge Tony Paglia real fast. Tony, the personal counselor here at Penn State Shenango. Tony's responsible for so much that goes on here on campus, and he's actually got something brand new for you students to tell you about before the end of the hour. And Tony does so much work behind the scenes for Stamp Out Stigma here on campus. I get a ton of credit for today, and it wouldn't be possible without all of Tony's work. So thank you, Tony, for what you do for Stamp Out Stigma. All right. All right, so let's get started. I can't believe that it has been four years since the first time I stood on this stage and spoke about Stamp Out Stigma. When I first started this as a, um, as a club project when I was a senior here at Penn State, I didn't dream that it would evolve into what it has. And it's just been such a trip. It's been a wild ride to see how this event has grown and changed over the years. We have heard some really emotional, deep, real stories on this stage. We heard from a young man, a student who lost his father at a young age, who battled with depression, shared with us um, his journey to weight loss and physical fitness. We heard from a United States Army veteran who spoke about her struggles with post-traumatic stress disorder and how difficult it was for her to find people who understood where she was at. We heard from a grandmother whose grandchild was battling opiate addiction and that grandmother's journey to try to help her granddaughter see her way through it. And we've learned a lot. We've learned on this stage how to handle someone who is having a mental health crisis. We have learned about the prevalence of mental illness and addiction and the stigma surrounding those issues. And we've learned about services here in Mercer County and elsewhere that people can go if they're, if they're suffering. And we've learned most of all that people with mental health and addiction issues don't need to struggle in silence. I've also stood on this stage and talked a lot about my own life. I've shared a lot of stories with you, but I'm not going to do any of that today. There are a lot of stories in the news right now, a lot of current events that are forcing Americans to have a conversation about some very difficult but pressing issues. America is talking about gun control right now. We're talking about <coughs> sexual assault and rape culture. We're talking about the First Amendment and the right to free speech. We're talking about the Second Amendment and the right to bear arms. We're engaging in a heated political debate. The left and the right, Donald Trump. Donald Trump's an awfully hot topic right now, whether you're for or against him. 
and people in the news media and on social media and at the water cooler are engaged in a heated debate about these issues. That is the stamp out stigma message, right? That we need to start the conversation. That we need to have a productive discussion, an open, honest dialogue about these issues. But that's not really what America is doing right now. America is arguing. America is butting heads. When we should be talking and trying to find some common ground, we're just digging our heels in deeper on whatever side of the issues that we stand. And I'm going to try before I'm done to make some sense as to why. There's more tragedy and sadness in the news. We've seen three hurricanes since the start of the summer cause loss of life and property in America. <clears throat> We recently saw the deadliest mass shooting in United States history in Las Vegas, Nevada, where 59 people lost their lives. And in the aftermath of these events, people are politicizing them and using them to further their own agendas. But in the heat of the moment, we see something different, don't we? We see people rushing to help each other. We see heroism. In that moment, when things are going down, our basic instincts kick in. And not just our survival instincts, but our instincts to take care of one another. Because in the moment, that's what's important, isn't it? Okay, picture this, take a journey with me. You're in a house, that house is on fire. You're on the third floor and you cannot get out. Suddenly, a firefighter comes bursting through the door to rescue you and you say, hey, hold up, hold up. Before we go anywhere, I need to know who you voted for. Do we do that? No, that is not what's important. Sometimes we need help from others. And that is what Stamp Out Stigma is about, right? If you are hurting, if you are suffering, there are people out there you can reach out to who want to help you. Those people might be professionals, counselors, educators, family, friends. They want to help you. It is in our nature. It is human nature to help one another. We are born helpers. And I can prove it. I need y'all to take another trip with me, okay? Let's talk about Svalmi. Let's talk about tribes for a moment. Let's talk about indigenous, uncivilized tribes that we see in images from National Geographic and wherever. Let's think about what people who live free from the influences of politics and media and currency, think about how they live. They do a lot of the same things we do, right? They live in communities. They take care of their children, of their sick, of their elderly. They hunt, they gather food together. They create art. They do a lot of the things that we do, free from all the influences of the civilized world, whatever that word means. They do the same things that we do. They help each other, but they also protect each other. And they protect their tribes, and they protect their way of life. That is also part of their instinct. So keep that in the back of our mind, in the back of your mind, and I'll get back to that. <clears throat> we have tribes in America too, don't we? We just have different names for our tribes. We call them Republican, Democrat, Conservative, Liberal, Gay, Straight, Black, White, you get the idea. <clears throat> and when someone challenges our ideologies, the core beliefs that our tribe holds, when someone says something that goes against our worldview, those same survival instincts kick in. And our brains react the same way to a perceived attack on our ideologies as they do to an attack on our physical bodies and our tribes, which we depend on for survival. Case in point, there is a deeply ingrained biological reason why it's so hard for people to have a conversation about these polarizing issues. It's the main reason why at a time we should be having an open and honest dialogue about gun control, about abortion, everything we're talking about right now, free speech, we just end up digging our heels in deeper and doubling down on our convictions. So let's tie all of this together with Stamp Out Stigma, because that's why we're here. 
If you think that addicts just deserve to die or go to jail, or you think that people with mental health issues are crazy and they should just be heavily medicated or locked away or whatever, we all are going to have a very difficult time changing your minds. So what can be done about this? I just ask each and every one of you to recognize why it is that when someone says something that goes against one of your deeply held core beliefs, that you are mindful of why you respond to it the way you do. And challenge yourself to listen to the opinions of others. Because that is the only way we as a nation, as a people, are going to come together as one and move in a positive direction, a direction of change that benefits all of us. So I just need y'all to listen to each other and to yourselves. Listen. Thank you.